Welcome to our series in the names of God. Today we're going to be looking at the name El Roy, the God who sees. And this is a very important name for you and me to know. Because in those times when we feel like no one sees, no one cares, we feel alone, we need to know that our God is a God who sees. Hagar learned that name and she declared that name in a time where she felt so alone, thinking no one cared, no one even knew where she was in her state of despair. She was a handmaid of Abraham's wife. God had promised Abraham and Sarah a son, but it had been 11 years. That's a long time. So Sarah, really like you and like me, decided to come up with a solution to help God keep his promise. Have Abraham sleep with her handmaid. Sure enough, Hagar conceived. Afterwards, it backfired. And Sarah said to Abraham, my wrong be upon you. In other words, why did you listen to me? Will God bless it? Can he use it? Yes, because that's just what our God does. God is so able and willing to take our mess ups and use them for good. But see, all this could have been avoided if Abraham and Sarah would have just asked the Lord. The result of taking things into their own hands was there was contention between Sarah and Hagar. And it eventually became so strong that Hagar fled Sarah because she was dealing so harshly with her. And the angel of the Lord appeared to Hagar and told her, go back. Go back to the contention. Go back to the harshness. Abraham had actually said to Sarah about Hagar, Indeed, your maid is in your hand. Do with her as you please. So Hagar, in returning, could not expect Abraham to protect her or intervene for her. The angel of the Lord, it's a title often referring to Jesus, told Hagar, go back. Go back to your hardship. He told Hagar in Genesis 16, 9, return to your mistress and submit yourself under her hand. Now, how are you feeling about this right now? Are you cringing? See, these are God's words. They're not mine. I wouldn't have said them, but he did. What do you feel like? You need to know about a God that tells you to go back, to endure hardship, to return to hardship. As I say this, I, I have the thought that maybe for some of you, you're thinking this is the last blog I'm going to watch on the names of God because I don't want a God that wants me to endure hardship. But maybe that's why this blog right now is so important to you, even though it's challenging. Because our God sometimes asks us to submit to hard things. And the only way you and I can submit to hardship and difficult things is to know his intentions. His plans for us are good. And to know that he truly gets our life. That he sees it. That he knows it. That he understands it. That he's the same God that compelled Hagar to return for him. Later, God would allow Hagar to leave. But see, it was in God's timing, not Hagar's. The angel of the Lord told Hagar, go back. Not go back and Sarah will be nice. Not go back and Sarah's learned her lesson. But go back. I have a plan. See, remember, Jeremiah 29, 11 reminds us that God's plans are always good. So when God says to us, endure hardship, do whatever. He says, and he says, I have a plan. It's that reminder. He's going to use it for good, for your good. And he told Hagar she's with child. His name would be called Ishmael. Ishmael. El, remember, is a name for God. So Ishmael is the God who hears. Look at the words that follow God's words to Hagar in Genesis 16. 13. Then she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees. For she said, have I also seen him who sees me? Elroy. 
She would name her son Ishmael, the God who hears. But the name that touched Hagar that day was El Roy, the God who sees. And it was personal for Hagar, as it can be for you and me. See, she called him the God who sees me. Don't miss that in her statement. I have seen the God who sees me. She declared, I've seen. It's an awesome thing to know that God sees us. But just as awesome is the fact that we can see him. Knowing his names helps us see him. See here is a seeing that leads to knowing. God does not just sit up in the heavens and watch you and me or watch the events of the world. He doesn't just see the sorrows and joys of our life for our God is a God who responds to what he sees. Consider 1 John 3, 17. But whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? John's point is if we belong to God, if the love of God is working in our lives, we will act like him. We will have his heart for others. If we see a need and have the means to meet it, and we don't, God's love isn't working in us. God's name, God's character isn't working in us because what God sees, he does something about. God never shuts up his heart to his children. He's a responder. Hagar got it. That was her part in seeing. Knowing God saw her led her to see him, which led her to obey. Sometimes it takes a desert experience to see God. And you know, if that's what it takes, it is well worth it. So enjoy this name of God as you stop to praise him, that he is a God that sees you. God bless you.